Hey everyone, this is Nick and the Steam Deck is truly an amazing console. And I'm saying console because that's what it's going to be for most people that buy one and that will never touch the desktop mode. But it does have that desktop mode. And some of you might be wondering if the Steam Deck could actually replace your laptop or even your desktop. So today we're going to take a look at a bunch of use cases and see if the Steam Deck can fit the bill. Just like today's sponsor not only fits the bills, but also helps me pay mine. This video is sponsored by Safing, and you might already have heard me talk about their port master tool on the channel. It lets you monitor and control any detail of your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface through the use of block lists, profiles depending on your current connection, and per app settings. It's also completely free of charge and open source, but Safing is also developing the SPN, the Saving Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once. So just head over to the link in the description below and download either the Portmaster or subscribe to the SPN. So let's begin with some everyday tasks. The deck doesn't have many ports, but it does have a USB-C one and a micro SD card slot, so you can expand its storage and plug in virtually anything provided you have a USB-C hub or a dock. It can connect to an external display and its own display can still be used as a secondary one. You can plug in a keyboard and a mouse, a controller, and basically anything that you're used to access and that would work on Linux. And you can also use Bluetooth. Once you have everything set up, you can use your Steam Deck for virtually any day-to-day -day task. You can handle files and folders. You can transfer them through the network using something like Warpinator, which is a super easy solution for computer to computer file transfer on the same local network. Or you can also just use a thumb drive, provided it's formatted in XFAT if you want to transfer files to and from a Mac or a Windows computer. What do you mean you don't just use Steam Dex for everything in your house? That's nonsense. Installing applications also works, fortunately, and you have access to everything that is on FlatHub. All these applications are listed in Discover, the app center for the desktop mode. You can also get any application available as an app image, which is another packaging format for Linux. You can find a lot of these on App Image Hub. To run them, you just have to place them in any folder you want. You can give them the executable permission in the properties of the file, which you can access through a right click on that file. And then you just click the file itself to run the app. They won't look good and they probably won't integrate well with your system either but at least they might fill some gaps that the Steam Deck might have. All of this should basically get you covered for your everyday tasks. You can browse the web using Firefox or Chromium, including support for any extension you want. You can handle all your files with Dolphin, the file manager. You can move them around with Warpinator or a USB drive, or you can install a calendar and email app like Geary or Gnome Calendar. Spectacle handles all your screenshot needs. You can install VLC for video playback. You have Spotify or YouTube Music Desktop for YouTube Music or any number of music players for your local collection. You even have a system monitor if you need to kill a few programs in a hurry or check on resource usage. Because guess what the most asked question has been on every Steam Deck video I've made? Pray tell, my good sir, what would the resource usage of this device at idle be? And yes, you'll notice that I didn't and still won't answer that question because I couldn't care less. If you need to take notes, it's also pretty easy. You've got Obsidian on the Steam Deck, as well as Joplin, Simple Notes, Standard Notes or Cherry Tree. All of these things are basic tasks that the Steam Deck and SteamOS won't have any issue performing. The KD desktop in SteamOS is pretty bare bones though, and it's lacking a few utilities that fortunately you can add easily enough in one click through Discover. For example, you might have to install an archive manager like Arc to unzip files, or a PDF viewer like Ocular. Now what about gaming? And obviously the Steam Deck can handle gaming in desktop mode as well as in gaming mode. You've got your complete desktop Steam client for all your Steam games, but you can also install the Heroic Games Launcher for Epic Games and Good Old Games, or Lutris for virtually anything else. Lutris can let you install Battle.net games, Origin and Electronic Arts titles, Ubisoft games, on top of plenty of boxed games, thanks to community install scripts. Lutris and Heroic are both available on FlatHub, 
so they're a one-click install. I already have a guide on the Heroic Games launcher on the channel. You can check it out in one of these corners, left or right. I don't know where the card will pop up, but it's it's going to be somewhere around here. For Lutris, I would wait a little bit because for now the Flatpak version isn't 100% compatible with everything and it doesn't really handle all that well using the joysticks, which is kind of important on the Steam Deck. Your games will support keyboard and mouse input or using your Steam Deck as the controller while playing on the bigger screen. Discord works as well, and you can have an audio chat using Discord while you're gaming. Or you can use a regular old Steam chat if you're playing a Steam game. So as you might expect, gaming is not an issue on the Steam Deck, fortunately, whether in gaming mode or in desktop mode. You can get a ton of games running, even Windows-only titles. It's not going to be an issue on the desktop mode either. If you like to record your gameplay sessions or stream them, OBS is also available on Discover, so you can definitely use that and even use a capture card if that's something you want. OBS supports the default CPU encoder, as well as VA API, which uses the AMD GPU. But you'll have to put OBS in advanced mode and play around with the bit rates to get a good result with it. Now, for office work, there aren't many issues either. You can install a plethora of office suites, like LibreOffice or OnlyOffice or even WPS Office. All of these are on FlatHub. So they're a one-click install, and they will run perfectly well on the deck with word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, databases, and most of these suites have good to almost perfect Microsoft Office compatibility. Again, if you want to choose an Office suite, a card should be popping up left or right. You can click it, I made a video about all your options on Linux. Now for email and calendars, you can use Evolution, which is sort of an Outlook replacement for Linux, and plugs in with Exchange servers. Or you can be more nimble with Geary and Gnome Calendar, for example. If you prefer your apps to all look alike, you can install the Contact Suite with a K. And you'll get basically Outlook, but made for KDE and a bit harder to set up. Video conferencing works perfectly as well using the onboard mic of the Steam Deck and a USB webcam. You have access to Skype, Discord, Microsoft Teams or Zoom, so your needs should be covered here, including audio calls, video calls and screen sharing. So no, the Steam Deck will not give you any excuse to skip those stupid useless meetings whose sole purpose is to actually check if you're working from home. Now any web app you use should also be working perfectly using either the pre-installed Firefox or Chromium, which you can get from Discover. If you need utilities, SteamOS will also have a lot of available choices, with calculators, time tracking tools, color pickers and a lot more. So for regular office productivity, the Steam Deck also fits the bill perfectly. Now let's talk about dev work. And for development, the proposition is a little bit more complex. See, the file system is read-only, so you can't use the package manager to install the necessary libraries that you need to run your local server or to compile your code. You can't install Docker, for example, or run your own local server, at least not easily. You can access Pacman, the package manager for Arch, which is the Linux distro on which SteamOS is based. And you can use it with the dash R command line option to install stuff somewhere you actually have authorization to write on. But that's going to create a few problems as you will have to define the path variables to most of the things you install this way. So it will make things a bit more complex. And if you've already lost a day or more trying to set up a development environment following the guides that your teammates have written 10 years ago, you know that messing with path variables is not something you want to do. Now you can also disable that read-only part of the file system. The only issue is, every time your Steam Deck gets an update, it's going to overwrite everything you have installed because the Steam Deck updates by writing a whole new system image on top of the one you're using. So you're going to have to reinstall everything every time the Steam Deck updates. Not practical. You could also just use virtual machines because yes, the Steam Deck supports virtualization. So you can install GNOME boxes and run virtual machines in which you'll be able to install any OS, run any server you want and compile your code there. Of course, performance won't be incredible. You won't take advantage of the entire device and you'll probably have to use an IDE or a text editor from inside the VM to actually write your code. So that's not ideal. But I'm sure that some of you already work this way on non-Steam Deck computers. So who am I to judge? I'm not your supervisor. If you don't need a VM and you can run your code locally on the deck, then you have your pick of IDEs. You have VS Code or its open source counterpart called Code. You have Eclipse, you have IntelliJ, Sublime Text or PHP Storm, for example. 
You also have plenty of dev-related tools like Postman. You can also just use remote desktop clients to connect to any other computer that actually hosts your local server or your development environment if you prefer. So dev work won't be extremely easy for sure, not as simple as on a less locked down Linux distribution, but it's definitely possible. These are just some examples of the stuff you can do, and they show that even with a lockdown file system, you can still do pretty much everything on the Steam Deck. You get a large variety of applications, including a ton that I didn't cover, like GIMP, Inkscape, Krita, or Blender. You can edit videos using Kden Live or Shotcut, Olive or OpenShot. You can record a podcast using Audacity. You can even install some Windows software using Bottles, which is a great app that simplifies the use of Wine to run your Windows-only stuff in a simple manner. You have FreeCAD for CAD modeling. You've got tons of tools for students for data visualization. You can write math formulas, plot graphs. You have apps to sync files to and from your deck, like Nextcloud or Mega or OpenDrive for Google Drive. You have Darktable for photo editing, Figma or Gravit for graphics design. Virtually anything that you'd want to do has apps that you can install to do that. Whether these are the apps you're used to or you want to use, that's another question, but there are options. Now, if you're thinking of bringing the Steam Deck to class or to meetings and use it as a laptop propped up on some kind of dock or using a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, I would say don't. It is doable for sure, but it won't be practical. The screen is seven inches. It's small, it's very small. For note taking or writing a document, you're going to spend your time scrolling around and switching windows all the time, it's really not big enough, at least not for me. And I know the deck looks like a thick boy in photos and videos, but let me tell you, while that screen is great to immerse yourself in your games, for productivity, it's really not good. So if your plan is to dock the deck at your desk, that's a tongue twister for you, then I'd say you can go for it. One port to plug in and you're ready to work, unplug that port and you've got a gaming console, it's really definitely doable. Hell, if some people did it on their Pine phones, you can definitely do it on the Steam Deck as well. Also, a quick warning. Do remember that in desktop mode, there is no password by default. Anyone that gets hold of your deck and boots it up can access desktop mode without any security whatsoever and access all your files. You can add a password to the default user, but I don't know how exactly that will affect your experience with the Steam Deck as a gaming console. Of course, I can't cover every use case, so the best advice I can give you is to check on flathub.com and on appimagehub.com to see if you can find the apps you currently use, or at least suitable replacements you can try beforehand. Anything that is not in there is a no-go for now. Anything that requires you to install a library or development headers or to use a package manager, virtually everything that does not install immediately in your home folder is also going to be more complicated. It's doable with Pac-Man, but you're gonna have to mess with path variables to declare to your system where everything is, it can be time consuming and it's error prone. Now with the huge amount of apps available as Flatpak and as app images, I would say most people are covered. And since you can run virtual machines, you can basically get everything else done if you're okay with losing a bit of performance in the process. So is the deck usable as a real PC? Absolutely. I was actually very surprised at how much you can do with an immutable file system and only access to Flatpak and app images. There's virtually nothing you can't do at all. So if you're conscious about these few limitations and you're willing to go past them to work on this device, then yes, you can use it as a desktop and you can use it as a laptop. I'd say it's actually unbeatable in terms of price to performance ratio, how good this thing is. It's, there's nothing else on the market that reaches this kind of performance with this kind of price. And if you don't think the Steam Deck can fit your bill, then today's sponsors got you covered. Slimbook makes laptops and desktops running Linux out of the box. They're based in Valencia, Spain, but they ship worldwide. They've got all keyboard layouts and they've got devices for every price point. If you need, for example, a mini desktop computer, they've got the Slimbook One, which has a fantastic aluminum enclosure, great performance thanks to Ryzen processors, and it's just small, tiny, and cute and powerful, and I reviewed it on the channel. You can check it in the link in the description below and get your own, thanks to Slimbook. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to throw a comment at your screen. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments. 
If you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye!